Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Mark on RC Nerd 74. In today's video, it's all about uh, Cadix Peanut uh, Action Cam. I'm gonna explain you why I changed from GoPro cameras to the Cadix Peanut and why I will change from five inch quads to three inch quads. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you some comparison footage of the Cadix Peanut versus the Cadix Tarsier, which I run the last few months or even a few years on the three inch quad. So first of all, let's talk about the reasons why I decided to give the Cadix Peanut a try. One of the reasons is that the five inch quads which I flew with uh, GoPros on, is that these are pretty heavy quads, these are pretty loud quads, and in my country there you get pretty quickly in trouble with people all around when you have a heavy noisy quad. I always try to avoid being close to people, but in the mountains you have people almost everywhere and so they are annoyed about the loud five inch quad. So this is the most important reason why I will no more use five inch, but only three inch. And the change from the Cadix Tars here to the Cadix Peanut is that the gap of the video quality between the Cadix Tars here camera and the GoPro is simply too big in my opinion. The Cadix Tars here delivers 4k footage but it's not really stabilized so the footage is pretty shaky if there is some wind and the quad doesn't fly smooth anymore and the Cadix peanut can handle these situations way better these are the reasons why i give this camera a try the setup you can see here now is only for the test flights i did for this video I will not fly with the Cadix Peanut and the Tarsier at the same time on the quad. I will change the quad setup also because of the weight. The Cadix Tarsier is around 18 grams. The Cadix Peanut just without external power cable is around 27 gram, including the power cable around 32 grams. So the quad is over 250 grams. It's 257, like you can see it here with the 4S650 China Hobby Line battery. And the target is to keep the quad below 250 grams, which would be possible with removing the Cadix Tarsier camera the replacement camera I will use for the Cadix Tarsier for the FPV system is the Cadix Ant Nano. This is a 2 gram FPV camera and I think with this setup I will keep the weight below 250 grams even if I'm gonna use the heavier stock mount instead of the super light foam and strap mount I made to do the test flights. This strap mount is only one gram. The stock mount is around four to five grams and you even need to add a second part to put it on the frame. Then let's have a short look at what you get with the Cadix Peanut. One advantage I like in comparison to the Cadix Tars here on the Cadix Tars here, you only have this ND8 filter. This covers the HD lens and the FPV lens. So in my opinion, that makes no sense because you don't need an ND filter on your FPV lens. You want as much light as possible on your FPV lens. And that was the reason that I had to build some custom ND filters, which only cover the HD lens, but not the FPV lens to get more light into the FPV lens and also have different ND versions of the filter up to ND16. In the box you only get the ND8 filter which delivers not perfect motion blur in bright sunny days. 
On the Cadex Peanut, you get the standard lens protector, which is a clear lens. Then you get ND8 filter and ND16 filter. These are screwed on to the lens, so it's easy to replace them, but they also sit perfect on the camera. You cannot lose them. The Cadex Tarsier filters are only put on like this, so in case of crashes, you can lose these ND filters pretty easy. And they are also get scratches from the inside on the coated side where the filter coating is on. They scratch on the lens and you get bright spots on the center of the ND filter. And then you have bright spots on your footage, which also looks pretty bad. So there are a few downsides on the Cadix Tars here. But the most important thing is the not well stabilized footage. So this is the big advantage on the Cadix Peanut. On the test flights, I flew the camera without external power. So only with the internal battery. The environment temperature was around one or two degrees plus Celsius. The battery only handled about three packs of around two and a half minutes and then the battery was dead so i highly recommend to do setup with using the power cable you can put on the back side to power um, with a 5 volt back or the other solution is that you connect your external power cable with the also included step down regulator then you can take the power directly from your flight battery from 2s up to 6s and then connect the cable from the camera to the cable to the battery and like this you have no issues with not long enough lasting battery on the test flight side i did i tried some different settings on the cadix peanut first flight is on auto mode which does most of the settings automatic so changing the settings in different light situations on the second flight i tried shutter priority mode this is my preferred mode the colors looked pretty good and you have perfect motion blur the third battery was on manual mode like you do the settings usually on your gopro all ISO, shutter speed and all that stuff is set manually but the footage was surprisingly overexposed. Not sure about the reason, but I used the ND16 filter on the sunny day so should have been all good because of the filter but the footage was still overexposed so I think I will really work with the shutter priority mode to get best possible footage. The footage of the Cadix Peanut was recorded in 2.5K 30fps and the Cadix Tarsier footage was recorded in 4K 30fps. This video is uploaded in 2.5K. You cannot see the maximum resolution of the Cadix Tarsier but I think it gives you anyways a pretty good comparison of the two cameras. A video about the final setup with the Cadix Peanut with the final mount and the Cadix and Nano installed will follow soon. So that's it for today. Now let's jump right into the flight footage. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a good time. Happy flying. Bye bye.